Hi everyone, welcome to, uh, I don't know what we're going to call this, Common Rebuttals to Questions Against a Stateless Society, uh, Objections, what you want to call them, you know, general questions that people have that uh, we're going to try to uh, articulate and answer in the nicest way possible. Uh, you know me, I'm Dave from Seeds of Liberty. To my top left here is Jeremy, and to my top right here is Adrian who is a friend of ours and is uh, going to be on one of our episodes of Seeds of Liberty to speak about uh, homeschooling. Uh, you just want to say uh, uh, hi to everybody real quick, Adrian? Because we've all heard Jeremy's voice a thousand times. Hello, everyone. Okay, well, um, today we're going to break down five questions, or try to, in a timely manner, and uh, not use too much sophistry for you guys. We're going to try to give you clear, concise answers on these things, and and quite possibly test a little cognitive dissonance here and uh, here we go first question I'm gonna throw it to Jeremy who will build the roads uh, the roads my roads um, yes this is the probably the most common objection at least it used to be the most common objection I don't hear it as often anymore except it gets thrown around by people like us who have heard it so many times um, that that's the stereotypical response um, that we give it, that we give back to, to anybody who, who dares question us um, because we're so used to hearing it um, the uh, the first question you, you have to ask yourself when it comes to who builds the roads is who builds them now is it government? No, they, they don't build the roads. Um, do they pay for the roads? No, no, they take money from other people to pay for the roads. Um, one of the best ways I've ever seen this described in a meme uh, is- uh, <laughs> I know what you're about to say. <laughs> using, using the scene from Office Space, um, asking, you know, what exactly do you do here? Um, that's uh, that's pretty much what government is, because you know, what, why do they? Why do they? I have people involved? skills. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> exactly, exactly. <clears throat> Tax, taxpayer, taxpayers aren't good at dealing with corporations. Um, so, so that's the first thing you need to ask yourself: who who builds them? It's not government. They don't build them now. So, why do you think you need them with? You know, in a, in a stateless society, why why is that required if they're not doing it now? Um, oh, for sure. The se the second thing, even if you want to ignore that point, <laughs> go to the go to the next one, which is well, how well are they being maintained now? And I don't know about everybody, but here on Long Island, it's atrocious. <laughs> well, not to um, mention forty thousand people die a year on government <clears throat> on monopolized roads. That's not yeah. That's not even touching on statistics like that. It's just the fact that the, the way they're maintained, um, and that's by design. They purposely use, purposefully use the same outdated um, patch materials and quick fix projects, um, so that they have to come in. You know, the roads break down every time. You know, sustain that boondoggle, huh? <laughs> Exa exactly. Every every time there's a uh, rain or snow up here, the potholes reopen, and that's another two weeks guaranteed for the local uh you know the local town uh maintenance crew the union <laughs> where, you know the union where, boys uh, of course where, where they'll have 50 um guys out on a on a stretch uh usually no more than 20 on a good day doing work at the same time um and taking breaks taking group breaks quite often <laughs> uh it's it's a sweet gig if you can get it i guess um so they, yeah, so you look at how it's being maintained now, and it's doing horribly. Um, just like every other, everything else, government intervenes in. Um, you know, as as you pointed out, as you've pointed out to us before, um, one of Danilo's things about how time you know time stands still when government takes control. Um, you know, it stifles in innovation, and uh, you know. So is it a, is it an effective model now? No. So why are you so worried about who's going to build them in the future? You know. The only other common objection. To be you honest, to... It, it can only go up from here, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So exactly. <laughs> so uh, eight, uh, what was that? No, your that, your, that, your that... final remarks on who will build the roads? Yeah, like I said, who you know, a pri private companies essentially build them now. Why wouldn't private companies build them moving forward? Um, you know, they would have an incentive to keep it, you know, more maintained, right? 
Of, of course, when you don't have government subsidies over your over your head uh, and it's literally sink or swim, you have a much more vested interest in providing a quality product uh, at the most reasonable rates so people continue to use said product. Okay, uh, Adrian, five minutes on who will build the roads and we're going to give you the main spot on the next question. Well, I think Jeremy, Jeremy effectively handled it. The same people who are building roads today are not going to be, uh, you know, all of a sudden out of a job just because there's no government to pay them. There's, they're, they're, they're going to be in higher demand, in fact, I believe, because people, you'll have large companies that will have uh, delivery trucks, you'll have trucking companies uh, that are going to say, well, we would rather have our trucks be um, taking less damage and invest money into building roads. Um, you know, companies, corporations who, are, who have in deliveries every day like Walmart or Kmart or you name it, Winn-Dixie, whatever grocery store, they're going to want their products and goods to, to arrive in good condition. They're not going to want them to be uh, destroyed. They're not going to want to be shuffled around. You know, I mean, Coca-Cola is a hu humongous delivery company. Uh, you know, they, they, they deliver all the time because Coca-Cola is in high demand. Well, what if you, you know, rode along crappy roads and uh, shook up all the Coca-Cola? You know, for example, what about beer? I mean, it's in high demand. You don't want to shake these things up. You want to drive on a smooth road. So you would have uh, no taxation going to a government entity. You'd have that money you could free up to go into paying for the roads. There could also be some way of uh, people uh, using their personal vehicles and saying, you know, all right, I'll, I'll pitch in on the fund. There'll be toll roads. I'm sure there'll be toll roads. Uh, there will be toll roads that people will want to travel because they're well kept, up kept very well, and um, you know you'll have you'll have uh, people paying these tolls to ride on these roads to travel back and forth. Um, you know, so the the same people that are building the roads today are they're going to be building the roads no matter what because that's what they do. You know, it's not like saying, well, if the government's not here, there's not going to be any roads anymore. You know, the government is not the monopoly on roads. That's a fact. So. So, you know, that's that's my two cents on uh, who will build the roads. It's the same people. Yeah. Yeah. And the uh, the common objective uh, objection is, you know, well, how are they going to get like a super highway done? You know, like the, the, the private roads will offer people more money than the government is uh, without that cloud or that that idea of eminent domain. You know, the government says, hey, we deem this private or this property to be this much because we want to put a highway through it. You know, the private company is going to say, hey, we really want to put a highway through this. How would you like it if we paid you this much? And it's always going to be more than what government can pay because they really need that road this private company does. And, you know, I, I implore anybody this, this little, if we didn't if we didn't give you the answer you want to hear, go look up any private roads in any country in the world and just look at pictures of them. There's ambulances like every five miles. There's phones on the side of the road that you can call and say, Hey, I'm stuck out here on this, this marker and they'll come out there and fix you. And you're not being, you know, you're going to pay for it, but you, you, you voluntarily get on their road. You know, it's not like the government where, Hey, it's not our fault. You drove on our roads. You died. It's, we're not responsible. You know, there's the, you can't sue the, 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 the country or the, the government for the road. <laughs> you know, if they, if they mess up and have a bad road and aren't taking care of the roads and, 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 I don't want to say policing it, but securing it, making it sure it's safe to drive. You know, like uh, we were talking, I was talking to uh, someone the other night about the roads or, or no, it was about DUIs, uh, drinking and driving. You know, right now everyone gets mad because how would the government stop drinking and driving without being completely totalitarian? Well, you privatize the roads that easy. If the private roads don't want drunk people on there, they're going to put a DUI checkpoint on every entrance ramp to their highway, to every entrance ramp to their road, if they truly don't want drunk people on there. Or they're going to get their pants suit off. So, uh, you know, that's just uh, some stuff to add to that. But do your research, guys. Look up private roads. Look how well they run. And they're much cheaper than public roads. And they're not used to boondoggle and pay off interest and stuff. So, um, that ends that question. Next question is going to go straight to Adrian first. It's how will we prevent child abuse in a stateless well, society? <laughs> well, uh, you know, there, it's, it's very difficult now to see uh, what goes on behind closed doors. 
so where you can start is with yourself. You know, you, you start with, with peaceful parenting. You know, I know something that um, um, other friends of ours you talk about peaceful parenting a lot. Um, I don't, I don't strike my children and I don't abuse my children. Um, but I did grow up in an environment where abusing the children was, was exactly <laughs> what happened. I mean, I, I grew up having my butt whooped every freaking day. Yeah, me too. I, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. But, you know, when, when, when I was six years old, we moved into a house and the first thing my mother did was plant a hickory bush right outside the front. Go door. get me a hickory. Heard it Go before. get me a hickory switch. Exactly. So, you know, and you got your, you got your legs tanned for that. <laughs> Striped you know, up. But, yeah. Like a zebra. <laughs> and, you know, so what they did was it started enforcing the idea that you will submit to authority and the authority is the parent. That's the first authority in a person's life. So they, they, my parents didn't gain respect from me. They gained submission from me through that. And um, to this day, I'm still working on my relationship with my mother, uh, which has gotten great um, since I became uh, very much into voluntarism. And I've talked to her about it. And uh, you know, as far as what can be done about other children and, and other people, you know, whatever happens behind closed doors, I don't know. But if I hear a kid screaming, living next door to me, and he's screaming for his life, I might just have to break down that door, you know, and, and, and see what's going on. But it's up to the individual person. What will you do if a kid next door to you is screaming for his life because his mother or father is beating the living hell out of him. Yeah, instead of what passing the do? buck, you know, take right. individual responsibility of your fellow human, you know? Right, so what happens What happens when you're, you know, uh, on an island and there are no cops to call? You have to deal with things yourself. It's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's about personal responsibility to me. Everything about voluntarism and this stateless society is about personal responsibility. Grow up and be a, an adult and act like one. Well, yeah, yeah, and, and I think the, 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 the common confusion that statists have, and, and I'm not trying to use that word in a pejorative, I'm trying to use it in an app. In it's, it's in a it's, descriptive. As, as a descriptive is, they believe government fixes these problems and they don't. No, they try not. to band-aid these problems. They try to prov provide a service for it, but they can't. That you can't solve every problem. It's impossible. You can't solve every problem with a gun. For no, that's for what sure. The government is. No, no, no. That's for sure. But then you know the status is going to say, well, you're trying to solve the government or the problem with violence as well, but you're not stealing from people to fund yourself to do that. So. Um, that's, yeah, that's I, as, a, as a voluntarist, I believe I have every right to intervene. When you are beating your child black and blue, I have every right to intervene and step between you two, okay, and say you don't need to do that to your child. Now, if you then, and I'm not offering any violence to you, but I will step in, and stepping in is not violent. But no, you're you're going then, to the defense of another human, yeah. If you and you're, you know, you have every right to do that, just as you have every right to defend yourself. But at that point if you the parent who's beating his child decides to be violent towards me to get me out of the way of defending your child for whatever reason when you commit violence upon me i have every right to defend myself so now i've come to the to, to put myself and intervene and and that there's nothing wrong with intervening but when you inflict that violence upon me well guess what now now we've got a problem Okay, and I will try to talk to people. You know, it's 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 something that I see. Uh, it may not happen this year or next year or next decade or in the next five decades, but say 200 years down the road, you know, we need to to get ourselves to that idea of understanding that crank the core know, up. You know, <laughs> we we can do this, and we have to get it into first gear to move forward first. And eventually we'll hit fifth gear and sixth gear and be moving faster and there'll be more people on board, you know. So any, as any, far as that question goes, what will you do about child abuse? What will you do about it? You know, it's, yeah. uh, you know I like how Larkin Rose says it, you know, what will be done about blank? Well, what will you do? What will you do? If you see a, if you look out your door and you see a child, uh, let's say, you know, I use this example a lot. If you see a 12 year old girl being raped by a 40 year old man, what do you do? I'm do killing you call that motherfucker. The cops, <laughs> or do you go outside and put yourself between them? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, in that hypothetical. You don't call so the cops. You might, you might have, have someone else call the cops. You might do it after. Yeah. 
yeah, you might call you might say, Hey honey, call nine one one, I'm gonna go beat somebody's ass. You know? But you're gonna go and intervene if you're in a responsible adult and you have respect for other human life. Sure. Okay. And that's what's gonna be done about it. Jeremy, any uh, rebuttals or anything to add? Um no, I mean I, I can agree with most of what Adrian said. Um for me though, you know, I, I see this question and I think to answer it in the it's sort of the same way that I answered the last one. It's, you know, uh, on the other side of that, what's being done about it now? You know, you have one entity, uh, it, you know, every state has their own, but th there's one entity, you know, whether CPS or whatever they call it in, in your particular uh, state uh, that, that is supposed to be policing these matters. Um, and as you said, Dave, they just make it worse when they get involved. Um, the funny thing I, I always find about that is, um, especially on the more liberal side of the status paradigm, uh, most people will, you know, buy into rhetoric and in, in other arguments uh, about, uh, you know, if if we can save just one child, um, that's enough to have something banned or something, um, you know, some some other law enforced. That that's always enough, but. There's stories all the time of kids, horrible things happening to kids who get yanked away from their parents um, by CPS for, uh, you know, victimless crimes, you know, like, you know, parents who are part of the, uh, un un the unfortunate result of the drug war. Um, yeah, you know, uh, people that, uh, you know, have, have problems that aren't, they're not violent, they're not, they're not actually aggressing against anybody. Uh, they've just, you know, crossed some arbitrary edict and uh, because of that their kids get taken away and even if it's only supposed to be temporary there's stories of kids being you know killed and you know the, they, they get put with foster parents and they end up getting abused um, and regardless of how often that happens you know how can you use the argument in one instance if it's only if we can only save if we can save only one child versus this situation where you ignore all the bad ones to say oh but they're still doing some good on top of it and yeah, they're really it's, uh, what is the old adage? You're throwing out the thing to save the thing. I can't remember uh, the, what it is. Uh, the baby with the bathwater. Well, yeah, yeah. When, the, when when the baby in this situation is is this is the spawn of Satan. Yeah, you want to toss it. Um, they. <laughs> no, no, I was know. talking about the you know the whole idea of saving one child. You know. You're, oh. You're, yeah, you're throwing out the the baby with the bathwater. You know. Yeah. So well, yeah. They they just you don't want to. Um, you know, logic be damned <laughs> we're, oh, we're saving course. that one kid from choking on a plastic bag you know yeah any, anything else but in this situation where child you know cps and whatever the agency are called uh these bad things happen they they get ignored so again who's doing it now and what kind of job are they doing and overall i'd say it's not very good um you know in a in a hypothetical stateless society if if enough people demand this type of service, again, the, the market I mean, will the market yeah. will provide, and and there will be competition. So there'll be, you know, they'll, they'll, you're 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 assured better quality services and better pricing. And again, you're not <laughs> forcibly taxed for it. If that's a service you, you wish to to have provided for you, then you pay into it. Um, you know, so again, who, how will it be handled? You know, to you know, there, uh, from one aspect, what Adrian said, absolutely. Um, the only way it can change in the long term is if people change. You know, a lot, a lot of people talk about how you know, an, you know, anarchy, voluntarism uh, is impossible because because of, of the nature of man, as if it's fixed. That's such a ridiculous notion. If 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 the nature of man was fixed, we'd all still be cavemen. You know. Oh it's, yeah, it's, yeah. You know, it, it, it the nature evolves with us, and it, you know it, it it can change, um, and that's what we're trying to do. Well, exactly, that, that's what we're that's what we're trying to that's what people that's what we're trying to do through things like peaceful parenting and stuff like that. You know, you change the minds, and yes, it will it take some time, as Adrian said. Yeah, two hundred years that's a that's a safe that's a you know that's a low blip in the radar. You know, well in the, in the grand scheme of time, yes, but it but but even even in the short term, it's still. I think that's a lowball figure. <laughs> well, I think um, it's, yeah. you know, the, the, the adage, it takes a village to raise a child, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I think that that somewhat is a little, has a little meaning to meaning that if you're in society and you see something awry, you see something wrong, you see the smoke, you know, you're going to check it out. 
people are curious they're going to check it out and so, you know if you're seeing someone beating their children or whatever you know there's going to be charities and foundations like there are now but now those people have you know more money to give them because they're not being taxed because there's no state to prop up so there's there's going to be a larger you know larger children hospitals larger uh you know privately funded orphanages and stuff that would give these these kids a way better opportunity at life than being completely treated despondently by their parents and uh you know who's to say that that uh that 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 private orphanage or that private um um entity or whoever uh, couldn't go say hey look you know we you know go to the community and say hey we found these people they're doing some crazy stuff we want to take those kids uh, we want to take those kids parents to uh, arbitration uh, that both parties agree on and possibly gain guardianship of that child and, and give it a better chance at life than these people are because these people are beating the kids they're they're drowning their kids they're they're making their kids do stuff that slaves would do and stuff you know so there's always a peaceful way to solve issues and a lot of statists can't see that they think because they've been taught their whole life like i have like adrian have like jeremy has that you do something bad violence gets put on you and now everything's okay you never fix the problem right you just beat the hell out of somebody yeah, you, you're fighting fire with fire and when you when you and it's it's funny when I get into con conversations with people and they say you know uh, fight fire with fire. I'm like that's not what firefighters do. When firefighters fight fire, they fight fire with water. Because when you add fire to fire, you get a bigger fire. <laughs> you don't fight fire with fire. And I want to comment too. You said something about it takes a village to raise a child, and I know that's a popular um, saying right now. Uh, and I have to disagree that it takes a village to raise a child. And I, and I would like to convert it and say this. The village will teach your child what you weren't responsible enough to teach him already. So there is that. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't mean it in any kind of communistic way. I'm just saying that <laughs> society, you know, society has to do its part in making sure that people are treating other humans with respect and dignity. And, and that's the only thing I was taking out of that. It takes a village. Yep. So, like, if you have a, a city, so to say, or, or your neighborhood, let's just say you live in a big neighborhood, and this one family is just beating the shit out of their kids, and that 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 fam that that the, the neighborhood goes in and just takes the kids and say, well, "We're not giving you back the kids." That whole, as long as that whole neighborhood agrees that that's the right thing to do, how's that other? How are those people going to stop them? Obviously, something bad's being done here. And you're defending that people, those kids, by taking those away from those people. So there's there's many different avenues you can go down this this road, and it's it's twisty and turny. But the thing is, is we really don't have an absolute answer. All we can say is, is when we have a problem right now with child abuse, right now the government is trying to solve it with violence. Violence never solves anything. And so the once government we take, hasn't solved it. It still continues. Yeah, so we take that violence out. We take that violence to government, and then we see what we got. So that's 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 pretty much all I got for that that, that question. Um, next question, going straight to Jeremy first. Uh, a lot of times you'll get a statist in a in a back backs against the wall when you're debating government uh, the the necessity of government with them, and they'll eventually they will throw up the uh we have a social contract and you can leave if you don't like it. So is there any thing you want to say about that? Um, so, so the social contract theory is, uh, such a load of garbage. <laughs> um, it fails every possible machination of, of the, uh, uh, of contra of contracts, um, it you know it, it it can't be a contract of any kind because contracts have to go through a formal offer and uh, an acceptance rejection rejection stage, and that never occurs. Um, you know there will some there will some status will say that you know well 
you know, you were born here and, 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 and you consented to staying here. Well, obviously, you can't possibly agree to a contract on birth um, because by the same standard, the quote unquote legal standard, you were not considered an adult. So you were not able to sign any other contract. Um, you always have to have parents sign for you in every other situation. So how could you possibly agree to any contract? Um, so the next step after that is they will say, okay, well, fine. Well, once you turned 18 and you were considered an adult, um, and then after that you decided to stay, well, that's your consent. So you've, you've, you've consented to this contract now. Well, no, because again, you just spent the first 18 years of your life on a patch of dirt that you were placed, by, placed on by an accident of birth. You had no control over that. Um, and you spent the first 18 years of your life building relationships. Um, everything you know is there. Um, and again, you're by, there by no fault of your own. So how, have you all, how are you all of a sudden thrust into this contract? <laughs> oh, so, um, so true. So, so again, you know, it fails, it fails on that level. Um, the next level after that you, you'll get in rebuttal is, well, if you participate in the system, then you're consenting to the contract. Um, you know, even so far as voting, you know, even if you once voted, you know, well, if you're voting, I will um, agree with that. If you vote, you are participating. Well, well, no, I see. I, I disagree with that. I, I take Spooner's, I take Spooner's view on this, um, that it's not, it, it's not necessarily consenting to the system. Um, especially, you know, it's tougher in, you know, presidential elections to, to see stuff like this, but you know, especially in local elections, if you're voting, um, specifically to get, uh, you know, if, you know, whether it's a, uh, somebody who's, you know, promising to get a, a certain bill overturned, you know, a certain bill repealed or, or a certain tax removed or, or something like that. If you're, or if it's a ballot measure to remove something, um, if you're doing something to better your own situation and, and actually better the situation of everybody, like if it's repealing something that's, you know, was a victimless crime or, 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 or ridiculous tax, um, if, it's, if it's a way to lower that and you're bettering your situation, uh, that's not necessarily consenting to, your, to the system. So, you're actually, it's, it's about okay. your own survival. Well, no, it, hold, me, hold, hold on a second. Okay. It's, it's because the, you know, it's the same thing as the master slave relationship. Like that's like saying like, you know, if, if you're a slave on a plantation and, the mas and the, your master says, you know, I'm gonna have a vote and it, whoever votes for uh, a little better food and a shorter work hours during the week, um, we'll see how it goes and uh, you know, so, are, are, if you're voting for those things, if you're voting for shorter work hours and a little better food, um, are you consenting to the system? No. I, I, you know, the, what about the whole you you can leave if you don't like it? You know, it's uh, this is America, love it or leave it. You know, like so it's it's already failed on every level up to this point. So that's that's usually the next one. I mean, some of them will pull it out right away. That's they they think it's a you know a, a basically a mic drop. They're like they can say that and they you know that's it end of conversation. You you've lost, um, but. <laughs> You know, first of all, it's failed on every other level of consent. It's failed on every other level of being a contract um, up until this point. So how can you say, you know, first of all, how can you even attempt to say that with a straight face? Because you've proved nothing. So just saying you should leave, you know, I equivocate that to the, you know, you, you don't like your neighborhood bully, move to another playground. Like, that's insane. Like Yeah, that's the best you, meme I've ever seen about it is... Uh... The uh, the one where Darth Vader's pointing to Princess Leia and it says, "If you don't like the Empire, move to another galaxy." <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. There's a ton of those memes out there, and that you know about different, you know, about, about different you know char characters like that. And uh, but the logic is the same in every one of them. You know, it's ridiculous. Like if you don't like it, leave. Well, again, no, you've proven nothing about consent. Um, I, I the, and everything else is built around the belief in authority they don't have an authority over me because I don't, you know, I do, I, I've, I've rejected that belief. So what right do they, does anybody have to tell me to leave? I'm not aggressing against anybody. Um, another thing they'll say is, well, you're free to leave. And I love when they say that because, you know, they obviously don't understand the meaning of the word free. Um, number one, I, they just raised the, the rates last year. Um, I think the top price now is like close to like $2,300. Um, to renounce your citizenship, like you have to pay to renounce something that you that you just were given 
without your consent at some it's, point. It's idiotic, life. the whole thing. <laughs> um, and you're not free to leave. Where are you going to go? There's, there's violent protection rackets in, in every corner of the globe. Um, you know, Does that and, mean uh, they're going to give you a passport? Because you're going to need one of those to get into the next country, right? Well, exactly. You got to have a passport a lot because of... that that next government's going to going to do it. Asking someone to leave, you know, you don't like this plantation, go find yourself another plantation. You know, it's 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 just like that. If you don't like being a slave, go be a slave somewhere else. And it's just exactly the same thing. They you they don't see that. Here. They don't see that as that because you have to realize right. when the statists only believe propaganda, and they only Correct. retort it with propagandized phrases. And so they, they've heard social contract their whole life. They've heard love right. it or leave it your whole, their whole life. They've heard this is the most free country in the world. They've heard this is the best country in the world. They've heard all the na blind nationalism that's beat into their brains their whole life. Even the most liberal Democrat will say that shit when you get them to the point. Right. They'll say that stuff. I know. I've so is, is there anything that you want to rebut about uh, J what Jeremy said or, or what I've said or you no, want to I mean, add anything he's, to – He's right. When it fails every every definition of a contract, there's no presentation of here you're a, 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 an adult who can make a decision. Um, you can either sign this contract or you can leave. Uh, you're born into it. Your parents get you into it. Some people say that they um, – that your parents got you into it when they got you a birth certificate, when they got your social security card, and they got you into the system. You were born at, at, a, at a random geographic location based on you know time and where your parents were and what they were up to when um, when they were up to it. So you know you can't really control where you're born. It's not one of those choices you have to make. You know um, it's akin to to racism when I when I confront a racist and say, Do you remember when you were in heaven? and you were about to be born and God gave you a choice about whether you wanted to be black or white? No. <laughs> <You don't. laughs> I've never heard right. that, but... <laughs> that's, my, that's, that's what I tell racists. I, I don't think there'd be any them. black people in the planet. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, know, but it, seriously, that was God a joke. didn't give you a choice of what country you wanted to be born in. You weren't given a choice. There, if it's not by your choice, then it's by someone else's choice. And it's out of your control. There is no contract. There yeah, that's why, that's why I tell people, you were lucky enough to fall out of a vagina on this geographic area, and now you're right. better than everyone? Makes right. no sense. Show um, me a copy of your contract, and then show me a copy of the contract I signed, and then when you can produce these two things, especially the one that I signed. Well, it's a mental then, construct, right? It's You're giving consent for another person. That's what the social illusion. contract is, yeah. It's a propagandized illusion that people live with and they accept, you know, just like many religions. You know, no matter what religion you are, there's another religion out there who believes something completely different than you do. One of you is wrong. But I would Maybe say both, both of you are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, we won't get into well, that. But, you know, you, you have these illusions of there being some sort of social contract, which is not a contract at all, as Jeremy stated. Uh, it, there, there is no constructed anything stating you must this and you must that, except by legislators, who by laws that you had no, uh, you had no say in, whatsoever, at the at the point of your birth. In fact, you'd be 18 years away from it, from having a say. So you know, it's it's there's just no social contract, and and it is a, a mental construct that people begin to accept, just like with religion, they accept certain deities. So you know, you can't prove it exists. I think the, the, the social contract exists to kind of be that, you know, that thing that someone takes with a pill, you know, and it, and, and it is to trick their body to, to not realize that, you know, this is the, this is what's enslaving you, essentially. Like this is, this is how you're supposed to make me being enslaved palatable. He goes, oh, it's the social contract. Everybody's got to do it. So it's like, it's one of those things where, you know, to, to, to quote the great Doug Stanhope, you were born free, the government fucked you out of half of it, and you wave a flag celebrating so, it. Yeah. yeah, so it, 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 that, that one sentence or phrase kind of shits on, like, a lot of things. And uh, it, it really is irrefutable. <laughs> um, 
So we're going to move on to the next question. If you have any more questions about the social contract, uh, feel free to ask below in the in the in the comments or or, or hit us up on Twitter. Or it, it's it's a hard thing for a lot of people to get over because it's beat into their head the whole their whole life. And uh, and um, just just Google search social contract and, and and start reading about it, and you'll realize how batshit crazy it was. I mean, it was something from the mid 1700s. Uh, from a French politician, I believe, and it's just, it's not really realistic. It's uh, uh, legalese to trick people into accepting their own slavery. Uh, so, uh, next question, who is, Jeremy was the first, so Adrian, this is yours, Adrian. You're the first person to talk on this question. It's, yeah. it's a tough one, and this is a hard one for a lot of statists to, to this is, a, the, you know, there's speed bumps, and then there's, holy shit, there's a speed bump ahead. Pothole. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I hope I'll pass. All right. Who are you going to call when you're robbed or when you're being robbed uh, slash need help or being murdered or, or? Well, it depends on the situation. You know, if I need some immediate help, I'll call a neighbor. You know, um, it's, it's, it, it's, it's my responsibility to defend myself. And a lot of people say, well, you know, what if there's a gang of people? Well, you know, there are some situations you just can't get out of, whether there's a government or not. You know, I mean, I've personally been jumped um, by several men at once. Uh, I've I've been ganged upon, ganged up on uh, by by as 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 many as nine people, uh, oh. all at once. And um, you know, I lived. <laughs> I'm here. I'm you know, I'm here. Um, yeah. I, I was I was ganged up on by seven guys once, and one of them shot twice at me, and and luckily he missed uh and, and, and oddly enough i was pissed that he missed because i'm like you, you're a lousy shot dude you know i, I could teach you how to shoot better but <laughs> you know the thing is is that who who are you going to call now are you, you know are you going to call the cops well the cops are you know the police the government they're not here to defend you they're here to uh they're literally here to prosecute crime prosecute criminals for committing crimes they're not there to protect you you don't call the cops and say you know somebody's just threatened my life and the cops go okay well we'll send the cop right over to stand guard over you that doesn't happen with government now i would say it depends okay. on your political affiliation correct you know and how, how much you can afford so you know if you're the type of person who can afford to pay somebody fifty thousand dollars a year to sit by your side and do nothing but keep an eye out on you you know, go for it, or seventy-five thousand dollars to get you a better security guard that's better armed. You know, but uh, you know, what do you do now? You know, who do you call now? Do you call the police? Good luck. You know, who are you going to call in the future? The same people you'll probably call now, your friends. You'll call your neighbors. You know, and you'll you'll make a noise. And you know, in a society, and I understand that we're talking about a a society in which uh, people are voluntarily living uh, without taxation and without um, the, the threat of violence uh, at every turn for doing anything wrong arbitrarily decided by people you've never met who really don't care about your well-being. They care about their own and their own influence and power. Um, you know, you, you have to take that responsibility on yourself. What will you do now? Well, you'll do the same thing then. Uh, without the government, and since there will be no government, since there is no government in this in this uh, idea we're talking about uh, in a stateless society, there will be no prosecution. You know, it's there's, yeah, there could be you know, private arbitration um, with private private judges or whatnot. You know, the parties agree to um, you know uh, adhere to the judgment made by the non-interested parties who decide to arbitrate. But you know, if you're get, if you're getting murdered, well, the cops aren't stopping it now. The government's not stopping you from getting murdered now. They're they're not there to do that. You know, unless yeah, like it, Dave it, said, unless you have political clout. You know. Yeah, and even then, if you do get murdered by a random stranger, let's say you li you're you're walking out to your mailbox and someone just drives by and murders you uh, for no apparent reason. Let's just say it's a freak of nature murder. Now. In today's society, as, as harsh as this is going to sound to people and, and as unfathomable, now your entire family, through taxation, is forced to pay for all of that. Mm -hmm. All of society is forced to, if they do catch the guy, 
if they don't catch the guy, to imprison the guy, to kill the guy, everyone's, everyone is taxed upon that. To feed and clothe and give medical care to the guy who has committed a crime, we're going to rob you so that we can pay this private company over here to feed them, give them three hots and a cot, whether you can afford it or not, whether you can afford to pay your kids or not, we're going to make sure that that criminal is fed three solid meals a day. He's going to live in a cave. You know, this is funny because um, one of my favorite um, essays ever was um, social or what is it called? Um, I forget what it was. Some disobedience. Um, his name escapes me right now. Henry David Thoreau, Civil Disobedience. Great essay. And in this essay, he, he kind of, he, he makes jokingly says, you know, it's funny that I'm the criminal, yet I'm the one with the protection. And people stand guard making sure that not only can I not get out, but others can't get in. I'm guarded. He says completely opposite. He made a joke of it. You guys read, read Civil Disobedience again by Henry David Thoreau and and you see how he just kind of mocks the entire system. And I find that incredibly um, amusing, except that you know we're being extorted in order to pay for these criminals to live a, a nice life. They have access to the internet. They sit, in, they sit in prisons and get their degrees and they get out and they do whatever they want. Okay, now they've served their time for committing their crime. And, and a lot of these people actually committed no crime because there was no victim. But you know the system is is as as it is right now is broken. I, I know I'm kind of digressing a little bit, but you know it, when you're not being taxed to provide for people who do bad things, you probably feel a little bit better about it. You know? yeah. yeah, Jeremy, anything you wanna you wanna add or say or? Um, I, I'll just I mean I'll build on a little bit what Adrian said. You know it, it really does. Again, you know like the, the like the first two questions, it, it comes down to who's doing it now. Um, and what kind of job are they doing? And right now you have one option uh, to handle these things, um, you know, and, and it's done rather inefficiently in most jurisdictions <laughs> across the country um, because they are the only game in town, which means they have no vested interest in providing the best product at the best prices. Yeah, um, and not to mention the Supreme Court ruled that uh, Police officers are not duty bound to protect you. Well, yeah, that's. I mean, from from the legal standpoint, yeah, it's it's even worse um, uh, than. I mean, it's bad enough, but uh, even if even if even they're announcing it and and people are accepting this, like, oh, okay, that's just the way it is. What about uh, the, fire departments? I think the, the that's court, part the, of the question too. Fire departments, yeah. ambulances, and stuff. Like, I think ambulances answers itself. I mean, they're kind of private anyways. Well, well, yeah. Well, I mean. I have a voluntary fire department in my county right now where I live. You yeah, know? believe it or not, people actually want to do good things yeah. in this world. So, it so, is a crazy notion, I know. Exactly. So, so yeah, peop, you know, again, pe people, you know, you ask who's doing it now. They're doing a, hor they're doing a horrible job. Um, and like Adrian said, they don't, they don't prevent anything now anyway. You know, people just assume that the laws are in place to prevent criminals because most people – you know, if you ask them, you know, off the cuff, right away, they'll say, oh, without the laws, there'd be anarchy, there'd be chaos, there'd be, you know, pe they just assume that people, that that's all, that's all that's holding the average person back from raping, looting, and, and killing everybody they see is these magical laws. Um, and it's not just that there's certain people that are always going to be bad, um, and they exist now, they existed in the past, they'll exist in the future. That's just, that is part of the nature um, you know, short of full-scale eugenics, I don't see that part changing. Um, or like always... a 1984 society where everyone's <clears throat> under watch and lock and key at all times. Well, yeah, or like, total, total and you're, and you're still like you've already seen like you've already seen all these DEA agents getting popped for selling crack that they've seized and stuff. So <laughs> the good guys are, are are preventing the drug dealers and stuff from from ruining our kids. And yet they're turning around and selling it themselves. It just uh, power corrupts to like the mental psyche of man. It's it's so like you you take an average man and then you get, you put power into the situation and they turn into something else. And when 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 you have just people out there that are gonna have a vested interest in keeping a society 
uh, protected. Because if you have three or four different security agencies in town, you know, bidding and, and you know, trying to provide the best service, you know, hey, we, you know, we've been watching this area. No one's gotten robbed in 10 years. You know, no police department can say that. And no, no private defense corporation or, or company is ever going to be able to say that either. But they could have success, higher success rates than any government ran monopoly. Free market, yeah, that, bro. Well, exactly. That's that was that was the other part of point that Adrian had brought up that I was going to say. You know, if you get the competition, you know, the, people just assume you you need to have this one force. Well, no. If you have competition, um, you know, Adrian, you had said that, that right, like because right now private security is ridiculously expensive. Why is that? Because on the whole, government on every level has the monopoly on that industry, and they have the again just like with everything else. They have, a, they have regulations and, you know, laws and rules that these companies that want to form these private things, these private organizations have to, you know, they have to jump through all these hoops in order to get it in the first place. And it, as usual, it's set just high enough that the people that are connected will be able to afford it and everybody else will be driven out of the market altogether. So that, you know, that limits the pool of who can do the security work. So because they can't, you know, not, not enough people can, can afford to jump through all those hoops. So they can charge higher prices because there's less competition. Um, and they're also, their they're, hands are also tied because of the local laws. Um, you know, you remove all that from the equation and you can have more companies offering products, uh, you know, offering the service, um, which will naturally drive the prices down um, and will keep, you know, keep people with a vested interest uh in 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 providing the, the good you know good service like you were saying dave they can have the they, they can have the you know you can have stats and you can see what they're doing and people will if if somebody's failing they'll move to another one you know and you can you know as, as we've you talked can about vote with your dollar you know exactly literally you know literally that you know that's the whole thing when when people get stuck on these certain issues that they think only government can handle well you're not giving choice at all and when you have no choice you're going to get you know bad quality almost every time because there's no there's no incentive to give you good quality um it's just problem with the monopoly which is what we have today exactly so yeah so like i said i, I, mean, I think who, it all i think it all comes down to are people going to continue to allow themselves to believe in the false sense of security that government uh provides and realize that there's no 100 percent way to have a secure and safe life there's risk waking up and getting out of your beds there's risk going to bed there's risk eating a grape you could choke and die is somebody that going to be there to stick their finger down your mouth and pop the grape out you know there's ri you know i live by myself i eat i eat dinner by myself it's a risk every day eating that dinner by myself i could choke on it and die so i've seen i've seen you eat i can understand that dave <laughs> oh okay all right it's a roast it's a roast now all right bring it on no but um you know to it's one of those things where people have to figure out these contradictions in their head you know i ask the average person that I, I say would you not agree that having five ten twenty cell phone companies is the the best thing because you can pick out the one that fits you the best and they go, oh, yeah, that totally makes sense. And I said, well, what if there was only one phone company? Oh, that would be bad. It would be terrible. They could do whatever they want. It would be, you know, no one would have option. Okay. What if we had five different police agencies and their brain melts? Just absolutely. They, they, they don't even know what to say. All they can do is revert into sophistry and what they've been propagandized to believe. Right. So what you have to do is realize that competition Competition and supply and demand will always reign supreme no matter what any communist in this entire planet ever tells you. And if you're advocating for government monopolized services, you're a communist. I don't care if you're a limited government communist. I don't care if you're a big government communist. That is communism. So um, we're going to move on to our final question. Uh, anyone watching this video uh, has already seen all these questions because I have it right here. But this one's a pretty good one and it is... A silly question, and I kind of wanted to end on a silly question. 
uh, once you've taken the whole idea uh, and looked at it in the right aspect and, and, and reality. Um, Jeremy, would private military and private nuclear arms be the end of the world? Would it be apocalypse? Because essentially, what we have right now are private militaries and private nukes. If you think about it on a bigger level. Yeah, um, the, the whole notion that privatized is bad, you know, it permeates everything. Like, you know, like some we've talked about in some of the other questions, you know, you talk about privatizing stuff and, and people's heads explode because they just, all they've ever known is government and they mistakenly leave government out of the monopoly equation when they talk about, well, the evil monopolies will take over, you know, completely ignoring the fact that they're, running to an even bigger monopoly because um, it cover, usually covers a whole country versus just a certain local area um, and you know so right now you have again you have no choice and like you said to an extent they are kind of private because they're not protecting you know they're not protecting anybody's freedoms especially around here they haven't been for a long time we've talked about this in other discussions uh, you know, they're out around the world protecting the interests of the banks and the ruling class uh, getting into, you know, undeclared wars and wasting tons and tons and tons of, of people's money uh, for absolutely no reason getting involved in things. Um, you know, again, you difficult. fought and died for Halliburton. Like, that's what <laughs> well, I want to tell people, you know, it's like. <laughs> you secured the profits of Halliburton and Lockheed right. Martin and Pl Boeing. That's Pl all you did. You didn't protect one fucking iota. Pl plant, yeah. we're, we're, we're planting seeds, not starting fires. Remember I know, that? I know. It, it's just, <laughs> ah, sometimes I just went, ah, like, wake so, up! <laughs> so, so, so. But no, again. no, no, like, the idea of a private military is just an, uh, an insane one. Well, well. Well, to, to everybody else, yes. Oh, it's hard, you know, because they think private military. Again, they think, you know, Blackwater um, or whatever they're called these days. Blackwater is um, run on, for, completely run on government for, subsidies. Well, Next. well, ex exactly. That's that's not private. Any, anything that happens now is not who, especially the companies, organizations, corporations that are extremely successful. Um, they're not there on their own accord. They're there because of help from the government. Um, so they would not exist. Um, in, a, in a stateless society because they would not be propped up, um, you know, but that's what that's all people think of. They see that and go, oh, that's what exists now. So that's what it exists then. No, they're not taking into account all the all the help that government gives them, um, you know, private. Well, yeah, pri I mean, pri yeah. Pri but so so if you had if you instead had multiple private organizations, again, competing with one another um, to provide the best services at the lowest prices um, and to keep the innovation innovation high, you know, and, and keep on top of everything, you know, like it, it just creates a better system where people have a choice. They don't, you know, so if a company, so, and and, the, and then the, the next objection is, well, they'll take over and, and, and they'll, you know, they'll have the nukes and they'll, okay, first of all, what's stopping all out nuclear war right now for the most part it's the fact that it's mu it's a, it's mutually assured destruction that's always yeah, been yeah. that's always that's always been the thing that's what stops it now why wouldn't that stop it in the future number one number two only one country <laughs> one country's government has ever used nukes to slaughter our in, 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 in a military people. in a military strike yes it, it, yeah, it, 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 to, to take out... But no, know. like, I was going to get to the point uh, that, that Stefan Molyneux had uh, about um, war is very expensive unless it's free. And when there's no central bank printing funny money to pay the troops, how are you going to raise and build a private military without starting a government? And if people refuse to be governed, you're not going to be able to start a private military. So, military and government are like this. I do not think that they, you could have a private defense corp or, or, or company that is protecting uh, a company's assets, but anything they did would be defensive. 
Well, it should they, be. Yeah, they wouldn't be going out and like trying to expand the territory of that company. Well, like exactly. Like a militia. Yeah, they're not going to they're not they're not out starting wars, which is where most of the money goes, you know. They're not they're not in 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 injecting themselves in other people's situations um and and blowing money left and right there. No, cuz again, they there's no protections, there's nobody to run to to get their to get their subsidies from. So they have to be as cost efficient as possible and you know, it's funny cuz a, a lot of statists will use that, you know, well, war isn't profitable. That's why the government has to be in charge of it. You know, like you know, they'll say the same thing about the space program, where you know, it, situations like that. Oh, it's it's only profitable to a certain so, to a certain number. So, no private. If, if war isn't profitable, then why well, is like no, 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 Lockheed no. Martin getting eight billion dollars? No, the government? That, that's what I'm talking about. There's only a couple of companies. Most people will say, well, on their you know, in a private society, nobody's going to want to nobody's going to want to foot the bill for that. Well, exactly. Nobody's gonna to want to foot the bill for war. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was like we were talking about in the la uh, in the the, uh, the episode from tonight. You know, no one would have went to war in America with Iraq if the government came door to door and said, "Hey, we need you to sign this contract that you're willing to pay the debt on this war." Everyone would have been like, "Whoa, I'm not right because you have no choice now." You know, the yeah. taxation isn't a choice. Yeah, I mean, you, you do have your choices. You can stop paying your taxes, but then you'll be threatened to be kidnapped and caged, and if you resist that, you'll be killed. So, you know, I mean, when, when you have no choice other than be killed, well, it's kill or be killed in that in that situation. That's the society we live in right now, you know? Yeah. So is there any, I mean, I, the, the whole nuclear weapons thing kind of is a silly question to me because I think uh, if the state was was getting dissolved because I, I'm pretty sure that's the only peaceful way to do it, is to dissolve it, you know, and um, I think the nuclear weapons would probably be purchased by energy companies to deconstruct and uh, use in nuclear uh, uh, power facilities. We would, we would hope so. I think that would probably be the biggest way because yeah. when there's not two or three big governments pointing weapons at each other to say, you know, like I think, uh, you know, like they go, they go, they go and look at like, uh, you know, like uh, this, this, this rocket is pointed at Moscow and has been for 40 years. You know, it's like, okay. So that's, there's no, there's no, like the nukes thing is so outlandish. Uh, you know that that energy companies would probably either take them as donations or take them as uh, you know f barter or currency for whatever whoever got them in the shakeout, and that's another question for another day. But uh, you know the whole private military thing. Is there anything that you would like to add to this whole kit and caboodle here, Adrian? Hmm. Well, you know. You know, it leads. It begs the question: Why would you want a private military? And this is this is coming from you, who uh, were a Marine, right? I'm a former Marine. I spent six years in the U.S. Marine Corps, and I was um, in Desert Shield and Desert Storm in 1990 and 91. Okay. Um, Thank you for your service. <laughs> I wish I, I wish I'd been able to serve you guys. Uh, sadly, I served the Kuwaiti government. Uh, and the Saudi government, and uh, anyway, uh, the Federal Reserve. <laughs> I served the Federal Reserve, uh, a, a great number of banksters around the world. I served them. Um, uh, by the way, for for those of you watching, uh, if you really want to humble a military man who doesn't know what he's talking about, who hasn't thought all this stuff through, thank him for his service. It's a very passive aggressive way of saying, you know, f you. <laughs> anyway. Um, uh, I'm beyond the whole point of saying don't thank me. Um, if you want to raise a private army, you know, to what end? You know, and it, it, it will be expensive. I mean, logistics itself, of of just simply feeding an army, you know, not not even talking about how to pay them, how to move them, how to arm them. It would take so much funding that at this point in the society we live in today, where you have no other choice other than be killed. Or fund this army through your taxes. Um, you know, I people... mean, isn't that the, how? Uh, isn't that how the King of England lost uh, the, the 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 Crusades? Right? <laughs> he 
He, he, um, he, he couldn't. They, there was not enough water for his army or something. Well, the Crusades is a funny little um, uh, point of history because it was uh, it was the Pope who called that, um, and he wanted to go take it. Well, back from at the one infidels. point, at one point, the Pope was the king. Yeah, the Pope was. Uh, in fact, it was uh, Pope Urban the Second. I think it was the year ten seventy three um, when he called the first Crusades. And what happened was that it got <clears> to the point where all the able bodied men went, and then. They had to, you know, they devolved into women and children carrying, literally carrying shovels and picks, you know, to go fight. And they just, they wore out their welcome in the countries and, and provinces on the way to the, the, the to palace to, um, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the city there, Jerusalem. Jerusalem, yeah. Right, Jerusalem. So, you know, they, they wore out their welcome and it, it was, he didn't fund them. They they it was a holy crusade it was a you know you're going to go on your own uh we didn't have the banking system back then and uh, that we have today um and people you know wound up living off the charity of the provinces and states that uh the, the nation states that existed between where they were coming from and jerusalem and they got to jerusalem and jerusalem simply defended themselves and it was easy to fend off an army who had just traveled so many miles on foot uh, who didn't have enough uh, subsistence to come there healthy and didn't have the weaponry in order to, to fight this fight. So, you know, it was a that's an interesting situation. Uh, incidentally, if you ever um, get a chance, read the book called Extraordinary Popular Delusions and the Madness of Crowds by Dr. McKay, uh, LLD. Uh, he wrote that back in, I believe, 1862, 1863. It's a great book that talks about the Crusades. Mm -hmm. uh, very eye-opening book, by the way. Um, that's why I know what I know about it because of that book. Hey, I'll um, add it to my list. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a fantastic book because it it will open your eyes as to why people do the things they do. Uh, it's about and it's, it's it's titled correctly: extraordinary popular delusions and the madness of crowds. So um, great book. Um, anyway, as far as like raising a, raising a private army, I mean, you would have to have such tremendous resources to do that, and then you have to have a reason to do that. Again, though, what you're doing when you do that is creating a ruling class because the military that's being raised would be wanting to rule the people of another area. So you would, in fact, be creating a government when doing that. Now, that's that's simply uh, not the same as a, a private militia. You know, that is a defensive force. Um, a militia is like a volunteer fire department. Okay. It's people who will do it because it's the right thing to do. Defend yourself, defend your community, defend your area. Okay, so raising a private army and having nuclear weapons, you know, why would you want that? I mean, it, just having a nuclear weapon makes you a target to begin with. Oh yeah, just for like someone Jeremy to kill you, up. steal you, steal it from you. Right. And plus, right. you know, Take if if you have a private nuke in your possession, and you know, energy company Excelsior comes along and says, hey, we'll give you uh, 10 billion Bitcoins or whatever. <laughs> wow. For, for, that, that. For, 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 for that nuclear bomb. Yeah. All the profit in the world makes sense to give that to them. Right. You know. It, and, it, and they're they obviously use using that to make a profit, not to wage war. They're going right, to deconstruct it. in the long the term. In the long term, it, it makes good sense for them in a free market to use it to create energy to sell to people, electricity, um, and to make a profit for the long term. When you wipe out populations, you destroy future customers in a free market. So, you know, and, and by the way, I, I always bring in when we talk about a future society where it's all voluntarist and no states, free market is always the answer. Yeah, as yeah. Jeremy has alluded to, as you've alluded to already, the free market is the answer. Okay, so you got 60 seconds to wrap up. Anything you want to say about these questions, Jeremy? And I'll give it to Adrian, and then I'll close the show. Um, well, just just basically, I, I mean, as you can see from these first five, a lot of these questions come down to the same same answers um, to start off with. Um, you know, what's what's happening now? And uh, why? Why do you think it's doing any good? Any good in the first place? Um, you know, and and what good? Um, what more good could competition um, add to that mix? 
You know, that's all. That's all you really need to keep in mind. Um, if you come across, if you think of these questions and you and you and you, you think it's an objection, well, think about that first. And if if you still overcome that, then keep asking. But <laughs> a lot of these can be answered by by just yeah, yeah. Don't get things. mad and bury your head. Ask questions. Adrian, I'm good, brother. I mean, I, I think we've we've made some good things again. The free market is a solution, as long as it's free of um, coercion. Cool. Um, well, is there a direct link to your uh, Facebook group, uh, Adrian? Is it uh, slash Voluntarist Ministries? It is um, facebook.com slash Voluntarist dot ministry. Dot ministry. You can just search, just search for the Voluntarist Ministry. Uh, I'm now an ordained minister, and that is my ministry. The voluntarist ministry, yes. <laughs> yeah, if you have any questions, uh, yeah, I know I'm on there. I think Jeremy's in there as well. Danilo is in there. A few other people that are really well versed at handling your anger at our uh, um, positions, and we will we will discuss this stuff with you if you're until you're blue in the face. We love it, and uh, yes. you can check Jeremy out on Twitter at anarcho abolitionist. You can check Adrian out on Twitter at is it Adrian Parks. It's actually Glowmaster. Oh, yeah, at Glowmaster, just like it sounds. At Glowmaster. And I am at Twitter at Seeds of Liberty um, or C, uh, at Dave the Hill, but I prefer you go follow Seeds of Liberty. Um, thank you so much for listening to this if you did. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, um, please put it in the comment below. Share this video wherever you can. Uh, we, uh, we want you to share this with your friends. We want you to do this. We want you to poke, 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 poke. Say, hey, have share you heard it. about this? Hey, have you heard about this? Hey, have you heard about this? We, you know, in a nice way. And so if you if you did take the time to listen to this, I don't know how long it is. Um, I thank you. And uh, we're going to be coming out with this uh, every week, I believe I'm going to be doing. Uh, as long as I keep getting questions that aren't the same, I'm going to keep doing this every week, uh, whether I'm doing it by myself, whether I have two guests, um, whether I have one guest. So uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Uh, bye bye. Peace. Thanks.